I remember standing at the foot of the long stairway in our new house. I was too frightened to climb. Then my sister Uche silently took my hand and we went up together. I was four. She was fifteen. It is my earliest memory of my attachment to her. My mother tells me that the close relationship between me and my sister started much earlier. I was a restless baby whose nightly screaming was soothed only by her. When I was first given regular food, my mother tried to feed me okra and liver sauce, but I would eat it only if my sister fed me. In my teenage years, she was the glamorous big sister who was studying medicine at university. I looked up to her. Her beautiful face, her smooth grape dark skin, the gap in her teeth inherited from our mother. I was always impressed by her original style. She made long earrings from parts of an abandoned chandelier and made bows for her shoes from old handbag straps. She designed her own clothes, dresses with colorful ribbons, lavishly shaped trousers for the tailor in the market to make for her. Many of her clothes were handed down to me. At the age of thirteen, I wore elegant fitted dresses when my classmates were still in little girl clothes. She was the tough one in the family, the unconventional girl. When she was in primary school, the neighbor's son called her a devil, and she climbed over the hedge, beat him up, and climbed back home to continue her game of table tennis. That evening, the neighbors came over to complain to my parents. Asked to apologize to the boy, my sister said, "But he called me a devil." She once sneaked into my mother's wardrobe and took her high-heeled sandals to school. They were promptly seized by the teacher. She told my mother about it more than ten years later, describing the sandals in detail, laughing. She laughs easily and often. She sends funny jokes by email. She is the second, and I am the fifth of my parents' six children. I became a writer. She is a successful doctor. We have different tastes. She touches my natural curly hair and says, "What is this rough mop?" I point to her long straight hair and joke, "That looks like plastic." Still, we ask each other's opinions of outfits and hairstyles. We have long conversations about my book events and her medical conferences. We talk and email often. I love to spend weekends with her, her wonderful husband Udodi, who is like a big brother to me, and her eighteen-year-old twin daughters. There is something very solid about her. To be her little sister is to feel always that a firm cushion exists at my back. When our father went into hospital last year, it was her steady voice that quieted my despair. You work so hard," she told me once, simply and plainly, when I was struggling to finish a book, and it made everything seem better. She turned fifty in early March. "Don't get me cards that say 'Happy fiftieth birthday,'" she told my brothers and sisters and me. "Just 'Happy birthday' is fine."